Hey guys, what's going on? MassGFX here, and today I'm going to be going over another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering on how the basics of color correction works. Now, I've had a lot of people request this. Um, it's actually a fairly simple uh, way to go about doing color correction on photos. For example, we're going to be taking this original photo right here of basically a bridge and some nice brush land. And then we're going to turn it into this um, with a nice little sunset uh, scape going on. And then we have the fading on the darker sides uh, just to kind of enhance the center of the photograph. So to start off, uh, what we're going to do is be sticking around for our main um, adjustments. We're going to be sticking under image, adjustments, and then the three things that we're going to be playing with is photo filter, color balance, and our curves. So to start off, I like to go under photo filter first. Now once this little box pops up, you can click your down arrow here, and you'll see you have a nice selection of different options you can choose from here. Now uh, some of these are already pre-labeled for you. For example, we have the cooling filters, which will basically just give it um, like a lighter tint, more of like the winter landscape. Um, you can play with those. And then we also have our warming filters up top um, that could, once again just kind of add the warmer adjustments like the oranges, the reds, the magentas. Um, now you can scroll through these to find something that suits your needs. Now personally, I like to go with either the deep red or uh, some sort of reddish tint or, uh, or an orange tint just because I like the warmer images. Now I like to say that if you're doing this for um, a winter landscape, then I would definitely uh, stick with some types of blue. And you can also pre-select your own color if you wish. So, so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and stick with our deep red since I'm trying to recreate that. And then our density option here is basically, um, it's going to be preset at 25%. Now if you move this up and down, what you'll notice is the um, percentage of which the uh, color that we selected is going to overwhelm um, the entire photograph. So you want to keep that generally low, not too low, because um, if you see we put up to 100%, it just makes the image completely red. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick that at about 47% for now. And we can click OK. Next step, we're going to go once again under our adjustments options. And this time we're going to select our color balance. Now this is more of a uh, fine-tuning way of, uh, you know, hiding or adding certain colors. For example, we have our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. Um, I would not recommend messing with the highlights too much, but again, it's all personal preference. So for this, since I am sticking with more of a warmer feeling of the photograph, I'm just going to go ahead and play around with my reds here. And then I'm going to mix it over to the magentas and then come down to our blues and yellows until we get something that is kind of a warming feeling. Um, for the levels that I'm using for this, if you want to recreate it, I'm using plus 21, minus 12, and minus 10. And then this was under the midtones option. Now, if you want to, you can head over to your shadows. Personally, I would recommend messing with shadows over highlights, um, just so you get more depth within the image. It seems more, of, um, you know, realistic in a sense. And we can play around with these until we get something like that. And the color levels I'm using is plus 15, minus 8, and plus 7. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now the next thing we want to go is once again under our adjustments tabs and then this time we're going to select the curves option. Now what I like to do um, under your presets you can select any of these um, basically they're self explanatory. I like to leave it under default with the red green blue under the channel. Now what you can do is basically using your left mouse button just click and drag this anywhere on the screen and you'll see a, a middle diagonal line running through it and that's basically anything above the top left corner is just going to highlight your image and then if you drag it below it's going to add some darker tones to it. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys can figure this out and just play with it for yourself. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick it about there. Um, the input's looking about 160 right now. And I'm just going to leave it like that. And then we can click OK. Now the last thing you want to do if you are looking to have this uh, kind of darker circle going around the outside just to add more depth to the photo. What you need to do is uh, save your photograph. So I'm just going to hit Control alt save And we can name it, you know, whatever, video. Save it as a JPEG, you want to have your quality at maximum. And then we can go ahead and exit out of this. And from here, we're going to enter our mini bridge option. And then you just go on to go through all your folders until you find the one that you saved. So we're looking for one that says video. Exit out of this. And then we go down. May have to reload it. Let's try this again. Go back under desktop and nature pictures. And basically this is just how you find any um any of your folders using mini bridge. It's pretty simple. Scroll down. And there's our video JPEG. What you want to do is right click on it, head over to open in camera raw. 
and basically this is a very professional way to go about adjusting certain um, details within your photo for the time being I'm just going to show you guys on how to do the simple things that I did within my photograph so first of all we want to go under our effects category here and you'll see a post crop vintaging or vignetting and basically what this does is if you drag it to the left you'll see um, as you drag a negative it starts to create a black circle around the image um, now what I like to do is set your midpoints up to 100% or somewhere around the high 90s just so it isn't controlling um, the entire photograph um, you can bump up your roundness that will basically just uh, smooth out some of the edges so it's not such a strong circle and then feathering is pretty much just like any other uh, feathering within Photoshop and uh, the highlights really don't do too much when it comes to adding a warmer image and then the last thing if you wanted to just help sharpen up the image um, get some more of those vibrant details you can head under your sharpening tool uh, that would be under your details option and you can move up the amount and play with your radius here. Uh, the radius is basically just uh, from the center of the photograph uh, how far out it expands. So, and we can play with our detail and masking options until we get something that looks just about right, like so. And then all you need to do is click Open Image, and there's our new color corrected image that you can use. Um, you can use on photographs, guys. You can use this even on desktop wallpapers or YouTube backgrounds. So. Anyway guys, um, I just want to go ahead and get this tutorial out. It's a very simple effect, but a lot of people seem to enjoy to learn these things. So, anyways, uh, take it easy guys, and please remember to rate the video, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think it deserves. But other than that, take it easy.